All right, guys. So I just got done reading Reggie fils Aimé's new book called Disturbing the Game. And I just want to give you guys my review or impressions of it, right? So disclaimer, if you think this is a book just about Reggie's uh, Reggie's career in Nintendo, no, no, it's definitely not. It's, the, the book is only 30% Reggie's career in Nintendo. The other 60% or 70%, right, is about what Re- what Reggie did at other companies and what his roles were, what struggles he came through, how he overcame such struggles. That's what the book is really about. If you think this is a book for gamers, you're mistaken. This book is about uh, selling products and what how Reggie sold products, how he came, came up with innovative ways to sell products. So that's what the book is about. And if you're a gamer... Fine, but if you have a business background, you're gonna come up, come away with more with this book. You're gonna get you're gonna get more out of this book if you read it. If you have a business background like me, being a gamer and being involved in business, you're gonna get the most out of this book. So, without further ado, let me just start out what the book is about. The, so Reggie starts out the book. He's born in the Bronx. He lives in a pretty crappy neighborhood, and he shows his struggles. He goes to school. He works really damn hard, and he gets himself into Cornell University. Yes, an Ivy League university, and he talks about his schedule there in Cornell the guy was taking 20 to 24 units per semester that is insane guys the usual norm is 12 to 16 with 18 being the max but no this guy went 20 to 24 units per semester that is insanity on top of that he had actually had time for extracurricular activities so that tells you a lot about his work ethics I I mean, I was impressed, man, just reading about that. Then he starts his first gig at Procter & Gamble. He's part of the sales team, right? Marketing team. His job is to sell the products. If you don't know, Procter & Gamble is a huge company. They sell all sorts of stuff from toothpaste to shortening to shampoos to body wash, etc., etc. Big conglomerate. But anyways, he was in charge of selling Crisco vegetable shortening. A lot of you guys don't even know what that is. How often do you even think about that? But he details what went into selling that product, the uh, the ad- advertising strategy they got to use, how to market it to the customers, uh, how they were mobilizing the company to get this ready for sale, what time to launch this product at. And once that's done, they track how the product is doing, how many units is selling, what they need to fix, what they need to adjust just for a product like this vegetable shortening. How do you think well, Crisco? When was the last time you thought about Crisco? But it's insane how much how much time effort energy is put into launching such products that you don't even think about twice or even once in a day let alone games so that was really interesting but what's even more interesting when reggie moves to pizza hut so when he gets to pizza hut he's in charge of he's he's in charge of launching the big foot big footer pizza so at that time the u.s was going through a recession everybody wanted cheap pizza all the chains were selling cheap pizza but pizza hut pizza hut's pizza prices were pretty damn expensive reggie was like so what can we do to address this issue so he comes up with the big footer so he cuts corners they use cheaper ingredients to get to get it at a price point that's cheap the goal was a lot of pizza for not a lot of money so he succeeds with that it's a success the big footer but comes with a negative side effect with it People start associating Pizza Hut with cheap pizza. Oh yeah, Pizza Hut, man, pizza, that's ow, that's garbage pizza. Reggie got a wind of that. Reggie was like, no, we can't have that. He axes the product. He's like, no, we can't hurt the brand name. No way we can't hurt the brand name. So that was just interesting to seeing that mentality. Then he moves to panda express and he's part of the part of the executive team of panda express and he's charged with helping them go from private to public and moving panda express from being a restaurant inside a food court and malls to being a standalone restaurant um, anywhere so he, he details like how they go through with the floor plan how to customize the menu how to make it intuitive for customers to come into the restaurant or go through the drive through and just to see the process the planning the time that goes into it it's just really intriguing. Like, it's crazy. Like, sorry. you guys, you guys would think that a lot of time probably doesn't go into this, but you'd be, you're dead wrong. They put hours into this. It's insane. The, the amount of effort that's put into it is insanity. So that's his time there. Then he, then he does a few more career changes. He goes to Derby Cycles and he goes to VH1, right? But his biggest and probably the most interesting move, of course, right, guys, is when he goes to Nintendo. People were advising him this is going to be a big mistake going to Nintendo, but he just takes the leap. He goes to Nintendo. And you guys remember that famous quote, my name is Reggie. I'm here to take names and kick ass. And we're about making games. He details how much time they had to put just to come up with that quote come up with how to prepare for that e3 they spent months days 
hours, so much time just nitpicking every single detail about E3, the amount of planning. Oh, this show has to be at this time. We got to be here at this time. We got to have a uh, after show meeting with all the developers and like. It tells you, it gives you a rare look behind the scenes of what goes on to plan E3, which I thought, but once again, I, I'm just using the word so much, right? Interesting, but it was interesting as hell. I was glued to that book, um, but it was, it was crazy the amount of effort that they put in. But furthermore, he details his efforts, the, his struggles with Iwata. He, he, he had a lot... Him and I, him and I well, didn't always see eye to eye in a lot of things. For example, do you remember the commercial slogan "We would like to play"? Yeah, Reggie came up with that, but Nintendo Japan didn't like that, so Reggie had to convince them, "No, we gotta go with this advertising strategy. is gonna work." So, you see the you see the struggles between Reggie and Nintendo Japan. And furthermore, he talks about the Nintendo 3DS's price point. So what happened here is Reggie said, no, we got to launch it at 179 Otherwise, the system is going to flop. But Iwata is like, no, man, it doesn't make any economical sense. The most I can do, the least I can do is 220 Take it or leave it. Reggie was like, no, nah, man, I can't go with it. Then Iwata's like, no, we got to launch it at 230 And it flopped, right? So Reggie was right on that. But the interesting thing is Reggie doesn't talk about the Wii U. And he was in charge of the Wii U advertising and selling, right? And that flopped. He doesn't. He, he courses through the Wii U. He skips that part and goes right to the Switch. So, so that's interesting to see. He, he, what do you call it? He glosses over his failures and goes right to the Switch. So, but anyways, guys, this is such an interesting book to read. You get a lot out of it. You you, you just get to see Reggie's work ethics, the stories he goes through, and, and the stuff he does at Nintendo. Um. He talks about how Iwata promotes him. He th Reggie thought he wasn't going to get fired after the 2006 E3 because he fought with Iwata. Reggie wanted Wii Sports to be presented first before Twilight Princess. And Iwata was like, no, it's got to be the other way around. And then Iwata's making last minute changes. Reggie's, Reggie's like, no, you can't do that. So Iwata went ahead with Reggie's plan and it was successful. So, But Iwata, Iwata was about to visit, uh, visit Reggie again after one week and Reggie was he was like oh man i'm gonna get fired but he finds out he's promoted so you get to see a lot of cool antics like that another antic is reggie tries to visit iwata when he's sick with cancer reggie wants to visit him in japan but is against japanese cultural norms to visit the sick or something like that right so reggie was like fighting with nintendo executives but i want to know you gotta let me visit like a friend i'm here to visit you like a friend so you get a lot of interesting behind the scenes not only just through nintendo you get to see the behind the scenes through various companies reggie's worked at and you get to see the amount of work and the process and planning go that goes through to launch various products whether it's pizza whether it's a uh, vegetable shortening whether it's a tv or mo mo tv or music music video or even an entire game console you get to see the amount of effort and planning that goes into that which i find to be very interesting i took a lot away from this book i really enjoyed this book I give it a 9 out of 10. I just wish Reggie would go more into detail about the stuff he does. It's, it's only a 200-page book. There's only so much you can talk about, right? So I wish he showed more detail, especially at the Nintendo part. But regardless, I enjoyed it. I liked it a lot. Once again, guys, I give it a 9 out of 10. Just don't think this is just a Nintendo-only book. It has a Nintendo parts, but it's more like... Uh, uh reggie is like a memoir for reggie pretty much what he did what problems he came over how he encountered them how he got over them it's pretty much a reggie's career book so if you're interested in that go ahead pick it up but anyways that's my review